Today I'm going to show you how to do this fun little pop-out effect with a picture, giving the appearance that uh, object or, or subject in his really nice fish are actually popping out of the background in, in the picture. I use Photo Plus X5 from a company called Serif. If you're not familiar with Serif, they make a host of great software products at a very reasonable price. Um, easy to use, lots of online support, and, uh, and it has some really great advanced stuff too, comparable to products that are significantly more expensive. So, um, I've already imported the original picture. And you can see not only is the picture popped out, but uh, color enhanced. And that's the part of the picture we're going to do first. So we come over to the adjustments section. And first things first, we go to brightness and contrast. And drag the contrast slider over, right about there. And scroll down a bit and go to vibrance. Vibrance is a nice quick way to really make things pop out. And I dragged it all the way to the end. Kind of looks nice, so I'm going to leave it like that. Sometimes I will go into hue, saturation, and lightness and increase the saturation, but not today. It's kind of making things a little bit too red. Uh, and I just click back to make sure any changes in that section have been erased. And that doesn't even need to be there, so I'm going to delete that. Now we have a few extra layers. So I want to merge them all together. So I'm going to press the Shift key and click the original layer, the background layer. So now all layers are selected. I'm going to right click them and select Merge All. All right, now the next thing we need to do is right click that layer again and select Duplicate. And you can leave the default uh, name there, or name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. So now we have two identical layers. And one more thing to do. We're going to come down here and add a new layer. And again, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as the default. Now, I want to color this layer, and we won't see it unless we unselect the visibility of these other two layers. So I like to use a gradient fill tool. So I'm going to select that. I'm just going to drag from the top corner down a bit and let go. And, and that's good. Um, good enough for now. We can always change this later. So I'm going to add the visibility back. As you can see, those other pictures aren't there because the the um, the background layer, uh, excuse me, or this um, uh, extra layer is on top. So if we drag it down one, it disappears because now it's hiding behind this layer. So the next thing to do is we want to select the area of the photo that we want to keep for the background. So we go up to the rectangle select tool and kind of kind of visualize where we want to um, what area we want to keep I think that's probably good right there good enough anyway and we can adjust it now <coughs> excuse me um, I want to click on this option here the selection deform tool and I press the control button on my keyboard while I click one of the little control options on the selection. And I'm going to drag the top corners in, giving the appearance of depth. I'm actually going to drop that down a bit. You can skew it like that for fun if you want as well, but I'm just going to leave it like that there. So now just the tail of the fish is going to be within the picture. So we're going to select the background copy again, and we're going to add layer mask. And magically, everything gets removed except for that selection that we uh, 
just messed with. Now the next thing we need to do is duplicate this layer. So right click on it and select duplicate. And you can name it whatever you want again. And then we're going to delete the layer mask in this new layer we've created. And we do that by clicking this layer mask spot, right click it, and delete layer mask. Now the next step is to press the control button and the D, D is in delta, on your keyboard and that unselects everything. Now we want to get the area um, that we'd like to have pop out. And with the background copy number two selected, there's a bunch of different ways of doing this. Um, and the way I do it is with the Cutout Studio. It's a quick, easy way, um, and it, it uh, allows room for error. So now we're in the Cutout Studio. If you haven't been in here before, just a quick um, tutorial on it. You have your brush sizes. Currently it's at the small brush size. If I click medium, it gets bigger, and if I click big, it gets even bigger. And then we can customize it further with this. We can drag it and make it really massive if we want. Grow tolerance. Um, when you click on something, depends, uh, you can see how uh, the selection kind of jumps. That's called the grow tolerance. If the grow tolerance is set to zero, it, it won't grow at all um, around what you have selected. So you can play with that. Uh, show outline. Of course, if you didn't show the outline, you wouldn't see where you have uh, selected. Now, over here, a very important part. Uh, red means you're discarding, you're removing an area of the picture. And green means you're keeping that area of the picture. There's a few other settings down here, but you can just leave them by default. So I'm going to select this and make it fairly large. And I want to zoom out a bit. So we go down here and zoom out, just for starters. Now, the great thing about using the Cutout Studio is if, if I mess up a bit, it's pretty easy to fix. And I make my brush size a little smaller so I can fit into smaller areas. And you adjust the grow tolerance a little bit to make it snap to the areas that I want to remove. As you can see, some of the areas that we want to keep kind of got uh, messed up, but that's okay. So we go up here and we click the Keep brush, and we just click and move around the areas we want to keep. And we make our brush size smaller. So we can fit into those smaller spaces. As you can see, I just dragged it down and it automatically grabbed an area. And again, you just got to toggle back and forth a bit. Make your brush size a little bit bigger. I could spend a lot of time fine-tuning this. And in the finished product, I, I did, of course. And we can zoom in a bit more and fine-tune the areas we want to uh, deal with. Should get rid of that completely. Some things in the picture don't even need to be there, so no one will notice I'm missing. So that's a pretty rough example, but for the sake of speed, I'm just going to stick with that. 
and I get rid of the fishing rod completely. Well, the part that's over my shoulder anyway. Okay, good enough for now. So once we are happy with what we have done, we click OK, and voila! Suddenly we've removed that background area that we didn't want. And as you can see, there's some touching up that may need to be done. Not a big deal. And you can touch that up if you have your um, the layer you want to deal with selected. And just you can deal with it a few different ways. You can go to the eraser tool and you can erase um, it that way. That was a little bad. Um, all sorts of things, but the the cutout area is in this background copy layer and make sure that that is selected or anything you do here won't actually show up. Uh, you can blur it. I sometimes like to just blur the edges a bit, um, soften things up, and just quickly trace over the edge. And of course it's not perfect because I didn't really spend a lot of time on perfecting the details there. But you get the picture. Literally. So now the final step, the finishing touches. I want to press the control button and click this layer mask here. And now that layer mask has a border on it, or or is selected, and we're going to actually add a border by clicking the edit button and outline. And we're going to make the border 30 pixels. We're going to select inside, leave everything else as the default, and click OK. Takes a moment and then that border appears. And finally, just to make it look a little bit fancier, we'll go down to the FX section, click 3D Effects, click OK, and voila! Now it looks embossed or beveled. And we're going to do one last thing, press Control D on the keyboard, and that unselects everything, and voila, you have your picture, your pop-out picture not quite as perfect as the one I spent a little bit more time on, but hopefully you get the picture and you can figure out how to fine-tune your own picture from there. And that's it. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please add them down below. Uh, if you liked my video, please click like down at the bottom and uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, maybe I will add some more fun things that I like to do that may be of use to you. Have a good day.